Hello, I'm Dr. Ian McCullough of Johns Hopkins University. This is a short lecture on social network analysis, betweenness centrality. There are two learning objectives for this lecture. One is to differentiate between the four basic centrality measures. We also had this learning objective in the previous lecture on degree centrality. Unique to this lecture is how to calculate betweenness centrality by hand. Again, I have found in my teaching that students that are required to calculate centrality measures by hand are 11 times more likely to understand the difference between the four centrality measures up to three months past the course. As review, we are using uh, Dave Crackhart's uh, data set uh, to highlight the difference between the four centrality measures. Linda is high in degree because she has more connections than any of the other nodes in the network. Roger has higher closeness centrality because the average distance between Roger and all other nodes in the network is the shortest because he is one degree closer to this cluster down here. Conrad is high in betweenness centrality because he is on the shortest path between more nodes than any other. Eigenvector centrality is a measure of how well connected you are to highly connected others. Again, degree is the number of edges connected to a node. Betweenness is the extent to which it lies on the shortest path between others. This is going to be the focus of this lecture. Closeness is the average of the shortest distances to all other nodes. And eigenvector is the extent to which it's connected to influential others. Degree is used to describe exposure to the network. It is who you would think would be significant or popular in the network. Betweenness, the focus of this lecture, is a measure of informal power, and a node high in betweenness is able to broker knowledge, information, resources from one side of the network to the other. Closeness is used in diffusion processes. It has the shortest time to get uh, information or resources exchanged to other nodes. And eigenvector is not what you know, but who you know. We are focusing now on betweenness centrality. Again, the extent to which a particular node lies on the shortest path between others. It is used to measure informal power and gatekeeping within networks. The first thing we have to understand with calculating betweenness is the number of potential paths that exist in the network. This notation is choose notation n choose 2. So what that's saying is how many pairs can you pull out of n nodes? And the formula for that is n times n minus 1 divided by 2. In this particular network there are five nodes so 5 times 4 divided by 2 is 10 possible paths in the network. Let's enumerate them. We have five agents. So for agent 1 Agent 1 can go from 1 to any of the five other nodes potentially. We are not going to count a connection between a node and itself that is not a pair. When we go to Agent 2, we are not only not going to count the a connection between Agent 2 and Agent 2, we are also not going to connect a relation between Agent 2 and Agent 1 because we have already counted that in Agent 1's count. And that goes for the rest of the five nodes. Note this is how many connections are possible if we assume that we're just talking about the pairs. We are not talking about a directed network where a connection from 1 to 2 is not the same as a connection from 2 to 1. In that case we would not have the divided by 2 which would account for these other uh, connections that are in this particular visual uh, in red. So for an undirected network we are talking about five nodes, ten possible paths between them. We now need to enumerate what those ten paths are. 
So here we have 1 to 2, 1 to 3, etc. And these represent the, the paths that we identified in the previous step. It is important to use that formula so that you know how many you're talking about. Otherwise, I guarantee you will miss one, you will lose track. It is also wise to enumerate them as I did, where you start from agent one and say all the other paths, then two will be enumerated from three to five, then three starts at four to five, and then four to five. If you go in that order, you will make sure that you are less likely to miss one of the paths. The next step is to calculate the geodesic. So the geodesic is a term that it refers to the shortest path between uh, agents. You'll recall in our terminology lecture that a path is a walk through the network where nodes and links are distinct. Geodesic is one step more restrictive in that it is not only a path in the network but the shortest path. So if you were to look at the path between agent 1 and agent 3, for example, or let's use agent 1 and agent 2, going direct from agent 1 to agent 2 is the shortest path. Agent 1 to agent 3 to agent 2 is also a path to get from 1 to 2, but it is not the shortest path, therefore it is not a geodesic. So in this network, as we said, 1 to 2 is the shortest path. 1 to 3 is the shortest path for that connection. When you look at going from agent 1 to agent 4, you now must go through agent 3 to get there. So the shortest, so the geodesic, the shortest path is 1, 3, 4. Similar to 5, and we can continue this for the other paths in the network. You'll notice that in this network there are only 5 pairs in which there is a node in between the beginning and end points of the of that path. So this is important for understanding what frequency do these nodes occur on the shortest path. So for the first pair, 1 to 2, there is no node that occurs in between the start and end point. 1 and 2 do not count. That's the beginning and end point. We're not tallying any betweenness for that relation. Same thing for 1 to 3. On the next path, you'll see that agent 3 occurs on every shortest path in the network, or in, the, in that pair from 1 to 4. We have the same thing for 1 to 5, and so on. So again, you'll notice that agent 3 is the only node that ever occurs on the shortest path. Again, we're not talking about starting point or ending point. We now must sum down each of these agents to get their total tally of how frequently they fall on the shortest path between networks. We now take the sum in the numerator of the measure. These are for each of the five agents. The denominator is now n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 2. You can either just recall the formula, or you may notice that when we were talking about pairs, uh, n choose 2, that formula was 1 half n times n minus 1. Well, if we are looking at an agent and seeing how far, how, how often it falls on the shortest path between the others, well, what are the others? The others are now n minus 1. So, if I were to say n minus 1 choose 2, I will have a formula of n is now n minus 1, n minus 1 is now n minus 1 minus 1, or n minus 2. So this formula for the denominator is the number of pairs excluding the node that you're evaluating. So for this network, that ends up being 6. So the numerator in all of these between the centrality measures is now 6. Thus the between the score is as follows. Had there been no connection between agent 1 and agent 2, then 
the shortest path between agent one and two would have also gone through three like every other pair and we would have one more tally for agent three and its between the centrality would be one. Here is the network where the nodes are sized by their between the centrality score. At this point I would like you to pause the video and go through the betweenness calculation for the network that you see here. Now that you've had a chance to work on this exercise, we will go through the solution. And I think you will find a couple issues that might have been challenging and might have uh, caused some question. Let's begin. We have six nodes now. So if we enumerate them, as I suggested before, we should have 15 pairs. The shortest path from 1 to 2 is itself. The same for 1 to 3. 1 to 4, you'll notice we have to go through agent 5. The same thing from 1 to 6. Here is something that is interesting and different from the previous example. If we're going to go from agent 2 to 3, there are two shortest paths. We can either go through agent 1 or through agent 5. And I will ask you to keep that in mind as we continue this calculation. We are now ready to tally the results. So a path that only has two nodes starting an endpoint will have zeros for all agents. No node is on the shortest path. Here we should have one tallied for five. We get another tally for five. Now watch what happens when we have two shortest paths. You'll notice that one is on half of the shortest paths. There's two of them and one only exists in the middle of the first geodesic. Five exists on the other geodesic. So in this case both of those get a half tally because they exist on only half of the shortest paths for that two to three entry. Each row of this spreadsheet can only total to one. Therefore, we have a 0.5. Let us say we had another shortest path that also included 5 in the middle. Well, then there would be 3, so you would have 1 third for 1, and you would have 2 thirds for 5, representing that it was on two shortest paths, if we had 3 geodesics. We do not in this case, so this is correct. We tally 1, none, another 1 for agent 5, another 1, and so on. We are now ready to sum down each of those columns and identify the frequency that a nodes fell on the shortest path. This is the unscaled measure of betweenness. The denominator uh, is this formula, as you see here, which for this network is going to equal 10. So the betweenness centrality scores are as follows. And this is the network where the nodes are scaled by their betweenness centrality. This does not come easy. I would ask you to go through some of the exercise in your course materials. Thank you for listening to this short lecture on betweenness centrality. This is Dr. Ian McCullough of Johns Hopkins University.